Hello everybody and welcome to Power to the People. Now this is a game by Hermes Interactive and published by Quitevo. Thank you very much for the key. You might be able to hear at the moment I've got a cold. Uh, I had to go visit an elderly relative, my grandmother, who uh, is very sick right now. Um, terminally so. And uh, yeah, so I went to go and see her and uh, had to go on some public transport because of my back. Uh, not being able to drive right now. And that then meant that I caught a cold off someone. <laughs> so, ah, uh, my life just uh, never really seems to get uh, just one thing after another, isn't it, really? But anyway, never mind. Let's have some fun playing a game and stop whinging, Shelab. So, if this is your first time playing Power to the People, we recommend you take a look at the tutorials first. You know what? Why don't we have a basic tutorial? Okay, let's go. I haven't played it before. You maybe haven't seen it before, but maybe you have. I don't know. So... Uh, we got climate information, so uh, it's going to probably be quite useful, having worked for an energy company before, I do understand that. <laughs> You're going to need more power sometimes in the summer for air conditioning, sometimes in the winter for heating, depending on what it is. Uh, looks like we've got uh, wind, so wind might play into something like um, wind turbines and things like that. Well, yeah, if you've got a lot of wind, you might make more money on, on that generation. Uh, if you've got a lot of, of uh, rain, then that might might affect the weather a little bit. I'm not sure. Like maybe maybe people will feel a bit more cold and miserable and want the heating on. I'm not really sure. But there's a lot of things that do affect the power. So I'm guessing that's what it's saying here. Uh, we've got some average temperatures as well, which would be super super duper helpful. Uh, okay, so candles and I think it's I think it's pronounced hug, but I'm probably completely wrong there. Um, <laughs> Residential customers only get unhappy after an hour without power, as I take it as an opportunity to light some candles and cosy up. Home cooked, no power usage bikes for restaurants at dinner time. Okay. Tutorial, a very limited selection of power buildings at your disposal. Okay, cool. So we know the climate. We we have some challenges. Don't know if we'll be able to do them. Oh, I'm so sorry if I sniff or anything like that. I'm so full of cold. Uh, welcome to Power to the People and congratulations for your promotion to Power Architect. I feel so amped to guide you through our very first steps in the game. Oh, there's some puns in it. I love it. I love it already. Okay. My name is Bob. I'm here to guide you. Your objective is to deliver electricity to an ever-growing population. Trying to keep customer satisfaction high. I was the power architect before you. If the customer satisfaction is shown in the right corner of the screen, drops below 50%. Oh, you got it to 100. You're really good. Um, and then it's game over. Believe me, I should know. On the top part of the screen, you have a lot of useful information, like the date, the weather report on the left, and your funds on the right. Okay, weather report up there. We've got some funds. Infinite. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> now you have access to infinite money, but that won't be the case in the real world. On the bottom you find the action bar which allows you to place new buildings and power lines and the mini-map. You can use the mini-map to navigate around the world and see where the different cities are located. Okay, so we're going to have some other towns around possibly. So it looks like we only have one on this map. But uh, that's number one. And there might be like a number two town, number three town, etc, etc. And we probably have to join them all up and stuff. Okay, so on the left side of the screen, you'll find all the statistics about how your power grid is performing. So power stats, total demand, power supply, generation, uh, unpowered blocks, energy sold, la 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 la, power plant, storage facilities, unmet demand, 100%. Okay, so so you were the architect be before me, and they're 100% happy, but you don't have a power plant. Really? You're kidding me. <laughs> okay. Let's start with the basics. You can move using WASD. I've already been doing that. Zoom in and out. Yay. Q&E. Turn. <laughs> turn around. So I like it when you can actually turn around. Uh, in this game, I actually don't think it's particularly... Well, it might be a bit necessary. But there's some way you really need to see behind things. And then you can't turn the camera. And there's ones like this where you can see pretty much everything. And then you, you can turn the camera. I don't know. So anyway, I've done, I've done that. Okay, lovely. Now that's out of the way, let me explain a thing or two about how things work so you can, you can deliver power to these ungrateful customers. Oh, well, you're starting with a really good attitude, dude. The first thing you need to understand is that you need to deliver low voltage electricity to city buildings, but your power plants will produce high voltage. So you need a transformer robots in disguise. 
High voltage can be transmitted long distances with a little loss, while low voltage is used for local distribution to your customers. Let's get started by clicking on the new power plant button on the action bar, then selecting the gas fired power plant. Okay. 70k for my gas fired power plant. Where are we going to put it? Buildings can't be placed within the city's limits. Oh, okay. Which are marked with a dashed white line. Something about building codes, yada, yada, yada. However, you'll learn later that you can bypass this restriction by using the research tree. Ah, oh, research tree. And let me put it right in the middle of my town. La, ha, 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 ha. Okay. Uh, furthermore, they have a not in my backyard radius. Oh, yes, I see. Uh, shown by a red circle, which represents the area around the plant that will result in decreased customer satisfaction. No one wants to live next door to a power plant. <sighs> After all, I know that hurts my feelings too. <laughs> oh, there's some good electricity puns in this game. I like it. Okay, anyway, let's continue. Now click on the highlighted spot to place a power plant. This one is powerful enough to provide energy to a medium-sized city. So we're out of the NIMBY radius. There it goes. Lovely. <laughs> select the new substation button on the action bar and select a basic substation. Basic substation. Put it where it's highlighted. Okay, so place it on the highlighted spot, which is close to our customers. Substations also affect customer satisfaction negatively. They're a bit noisy, I guess, if they're too close to buildings. But their impact is usually a lot smaller than that of power plants. So the radius of it is smaller, but also probably the amount of unhappiness, if it does overlap, is probably a lot smaller too. Okie doke. Also, just like power plants, substations can't be placed within the city limits. The rules are so annoying. They only make that work hard. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Seriously. How long have you worked at this? There's only one thing missing now. Cables to connect our brand new buildings and our customers together. Yay, high voltage cable. Oh, I think I have to hold it down. Okay. Uh, wonderful. Okay, so we need to do low voltage to connect to the... Sorry, I didn't read that out. I'm terrible. Bad YouTuber, bad YouTuber. <laughs> so, low voltage to connect it up to our customers. We'll go all the way along the road. Beautiful. Oh, I love the way that it um, it sort of segues onto the pavement there and puts power lines on the pavement. That's very nice. I like it. And where how it puts the poles in all the right places. The amount of things I've played, like, um, say, Farm Manager, which has power lines, um, Factorio... Um, sometimes a bit of SimCity, and you're putting in, well, actually, SimCity, kind of, the power lines, you just put them in, and then, then it sort of propagates, but it's really hard to put them in in a, in a satisfying, nice, neat way, but this looks like it might be a bit better than that, so that's quite good. Okay, now all our components are in place, we're ready to work together, the gas power plant will produce electricity, transmit it to the substation, which will turn it into a low voltage, and distribute it to the customers. Time to relax. Let me fast forward until the end of the day. Fast forward. Okay, so. Um, customer satisfaction, 100. Total energy demand, 162. We sold 138, but the, we've only just got all of the uh, all of the infrastructure in, so I'm not surprised that maybe it didn't quite cover the whole day. Um, we'd have to see over a couple of days whether it, it covers a full 24 hours. A NIMBY rating, 5. Customer satisfaction of 5. Power generation of 5, energy storage of 5, efficiency of 5, average score 5 stars, income 5,000. Uh, fixed expenses 2 buildings, which is obviously in my substation on my power plant. Power generation costs, power, lanes main uh, power line maintenance and loan repayments. So we made 3,000 profit. Lovely. Okay, when the day ends you'll be able to freeze time to expand and repair your power grid. But once you start time again there's no stopping it until the end of the next day. Oh, no pausing. I see. So if things go very badly wrong, then oh, we've got trouble. As time goes by, the city will grow and new cities are going to be built. Mm, so I don't do that. I just add the power structure and it magically starts to grow. Okay, you'll need to upgrade your infrastructure in order to meet demand. You'll be okay with any one low, low voltage power line for now, but as the city keeps growing, it might get overloaded and you'll need to build additional lines, or so they say. Low voltage lines carry up to 30 megawatts. 
If their rating is exceeded for a long time, they'll fail, offering firework-like ways. Oh, that sounds fun. High voltage power lines can handle more load, up to 100. Okay. Same so goes for substations. A basic substation can deliver up to 50 megawatts of power continuously and up to 60 during a peak. Keeping it at peak power during several hours might cause an explosion. Trust me, I've experienced that firsthand. So can we see, like... Pulling 7. So we know we can go up to 50. Okay, which will leave the city in the dark, causing customer satisfaction to drop quickly. That will make the bosses very unhappy. You'll hear words like incompetent and unskilled being thrown at you. There's more you should know about, like maintenance, energy storage, research, how weather affects your power grid. But that's not my problem anymore. One last thing, right click on your power plants and substations, you'll get access to a settings window. Okay, where you can check their status and determine how they should behave. Okay. Data on current output, maximum output, maximum peak, fixed cost, efficiency, turn on automatically at a certain time, turn off automatically at a certain time. So I can have things, if I get peaks in the daytime, for example, I can turn on like a booster one if I want to, and it won't cost me as much money to have that as it will to have something continuously going all the way through the night and wasted capacity. So you can, you could probably get it really tight doing things that way. That's cool. Okay. So best of luck. Okay, so congratulations on completing the tutorial. Would you like to go to the tutorials menu so you can proceed to the next one? Yes, let's try the advanced tutorial. Learn the ways in which things can and will go wrong and how to fix them as well as how to use energy storage solutions to build a more reliable and efficient power grid. <laughs> so this, this uh, episode might mostly be tutorial. Might do it as an episode zero or something. And then we'll we'll start next episode with a, a full playthrough if I if I fancy it, you know. So let's uh, let's have a look what they want to say. Hello again, new city, more money to be made, but also more trouble. Okay, some dumbass in the city council, urban planning commission, allowed for more houses to be built without letting us know. Oh, so silly. Currently, the city uses twenty four megawatts, but in just a few hours, demand will go up and reach forty megawatts, as you can see in the boring chart on the left hand side. It's very cold, so power lines with low loads are vulnerable to ice. The biomass plant is going down for maintenance in 24 hours. All right. Um, left hand side, generation, transmission, power plants. All right, I see, over here. So at the moment, we're at 20 odd. It's going to be going up to a demand trend showing how the demand's going up and down throughout the day. Right, okay. It means we'll soon get a free fireworks display. Aren't we lucky? So, how much can that handle? It can handle 50. I don't see why that would cause a fireworks display personally, but. And that can output 80. Oh, is that because of the lines? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the lines are what we need to fix. Let me show you what I mean. Boom! We overloaded the lines. So we need, like, maybe a second set of lines coming out so that it'll, uh... Yeah. I never get tired of seeing those explosions. Oh, but will you look at the time? My shift's almost over. I have to run now. There's this TV show I've been binge-watching. It sounds a lot better than helping you out here. Hello, it's great to meet you. My name's Hertha, and I'm here to help you fix the mess that Bob left us. <laughs> As you've seen, if a power line exceeds its maximum rating for a long time, it will fail. I'm glad I played the tutorials. I like these characters. They're funny. And stop conducting electricity until repaired. <laughs> okay. Sometimes it causes a domino effect. as if the power line struggle to handle the extra load put into the system because of the one that failed. You can right-click on the power line or hover and then press repair to get it fixed. This will cost money and take some time, though. Okay, so right click to repair. Fantastic, now things are going back to normal. I'm sure our beloved customers are happy about that. But everything will go wrong again if we don't improve the design of our power grid. This will happen again tomorrow during peak and then again the day after until we improve the grid or until they fire you. <laughs> An important thing to remember is that substations can also fail if their maximum power rating is exceeded for a long time. Then you have a serious problem in your, on your hands. Bob has learned the lesson the hard way several times. If we look at power generation information, we do have enough for all the people. We just need more power lines to handle the load, which is exactly what I already looked at. In order to solve our current problem, select the low voltage power line tool and add a second power line. So, I've got two power lines now. 
Perfect, now the load will be split between the two power lines, preventing this problem from happening again until the city grows significantly at least. And I would imagine two power lines is going to be enough for one substation, two per substation. Because they handle 30, that can handle up to 50. So that makes sense to me, anyway. Now, there is something else I'd like to teach you about. The biomass plant is operating very close to its maximum capacity during the evenings. Have you thought about what we're going to do if there's a sharp increase in demand? We need to be able to store energy to release it later. Energy storage facilities will automatically store energy when the generation exceeds the demand and release it when the opposite happens. Oh, I hope it's hydroelectric dams because they're cool. Some of them can release their energy quickly and are great for sharp peaks in demand. Some have huge capacities but can only release the energy slowly, making them perfect to complement wind and solar plants. Okay. What do you want a mix of them? So select the energy storage facility button and choose the li Li-Ion battery farm. Lithium-Ion. Uh, this is one of my favourites. It has a good balance between power output and capacity. Energy storage. Lithium-Ion. Pop you there. You're probably going to need some kind of is it high, high voltage power lines to connect them. Okay, what a beautiful building. Now the only thing missing is connecting the new uh, lithium-ion battery farm with the power plant. Use high voltage. Okay, dick. Boop. Boop. Now everything's working perfectly. Let me show you. Can you see the battery storing energy? Oh, yep. So it can be used later. It'll be released automatically whenever demand exceeds generation. Everything is already looking a lot better, but we have yet another problem we need to take care of. Oh, no. Do you see the notification on the upper right hand corner of the screen? Power plants required to be shut down for maintenance. Oh yes, I did see that. Periodically, when they go offline, sorry, then they go offline for a few hours during which they will not produce any energy. So our battery farm will also help us out in that regard. The best way to prepare for maintenance is to ensure the staff are properly trained so they can do it as quickly as possible. Open the research tree. Boom, boom, boom. So every day your company will attain one research point. You can use these research points to unlock different technologies to make your power grid more efficient and reliable. Okay. So some of these are taking two. That sucks. Staff training. Invest in staff training technology that allows us to cut down the maintenance time in half. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Now you can close the research tree. Lovely. Everything seems to be running smoothly. I'm happy and proud of you. And uh, now my shift is over, I'll leave you once again in Bob's hands. I can't believe that he still works here. <laughs> you built a lithium-ion battery farm? Come on, those things are expensive. I imagine that Hertha wanted one so the lights in the city remain on while we perform maintenance on the power plant. Yeah, that's like a really good thing, right? But it's a lot easier and cheaper just to skip the maintenance cycle. Right-click on the biomass power plant to open its settings window. <laughs> oh, gee, really? Now the fun part, you can click on, click on skip maintenance <laughs> on the bottom part of the screen. And there are usually no consequences for that. I do it all the time. Right. Yes, Bob. I'm sure you do. <laughs> okay. As a result of poor maintenance, the generators in this power plant are operate, operating in a suboptimal way. Power output will be reduced by 10% until maintenance work is performed. Hey, what's going on here? I didn't even manage to reach my car in the parking lot. And you already caused trouble. Hey, it wasn't me. Yeah, sure, Bob, sure. Now the power plant will have much lower output. And that's all your fault. I was trying to save our company some money. Most of the time, nothing bad happens. Go on, click on the perform maintenance now button so Hertha can go home. That should fix the problem. Well, now that's all taken care of, it's time to relax for the rest of the day. Okay. I mean, does the battery have enough in it? Oh, yeah. Have a look here. Charge there is going down. It seems like they're maintaining that. I think it's I think it's working. Okay. So that's advanced. Let's do this super advanced tutorial then. Advanced didn't seem too bad. Excuse me also if I sneeze, like yes, that might happen. 
Right, so welcome again. The city used to run on coal. Now they have found gold instead. Now, with, so with all the freshly acquired money, they decided to modernise. It's the perfect opportunity for us to implement a clean, renewable energy solution. Would you look at that hill over there? It's a perfect spot to place some wind turbines to start the transition towards green energy. Would you look at this clearing by the water here? It's a perfect spot to place a gas-fired plant. Cheap, efficient, proven to work. And besides, it works 24-7, not only when the wind is blowing. Don't you dare, Bob. This is an opportunity to move away from fossil fuels. Besides, once the city grows, more and more customers will end up in the not-in-my-backyard radius of the gas plant. We can deal with that later. There's even a substation, and the old power lines used to connect to the coal-fired plant. <sighs> we can just put the new gas fire plant over here, and we're good to go. No time wasted, no new investments, only pure profit. Go on, put a gas fired plant over here. I'll highlight the exact location once you're ready to place it. I don't want to, Bob. This is not what I want. But since it's a tutorial and it has me on rails, this is what we will do. Okay, all done. Great work. Now everything's up and running. See, I told you this was the right thing to do. Beautiful. Oh, well, what do you know? Sees Bob has underestimated how much the city has been growing lately. It's causing, sorry, using way more power than a single line can handle. Luckily, this is an old city. We have plenty of research points waiting to be used. Science is always the answer. All right. So let's do improved cable alloys. Where's improved cable alloys? There they are. Five research points. Lovely. Nerd, close that dumb research window at once. Don't be so mean, Bob. You'll see. This will fix the mess you got us in. We need to repair that, don't we? Go ahead and repair it. R perfect. I imagine that's what she said. I'm just doing things before she even tells me. Well done. Let's fast forward and see what happens. <laughs> oh no, it seems our efforts weren't enough. What now? This is getting out of hand. I can't afford to lose my job again. Truce? That sounds good. Maybe we can try out my plan. Sure. Maybe by combining our ideas we can fix this mess and finally get to go home. Let's start by building some wind turbines here. Okay, wind turbines. Lovely. So I expect by spreading the load over two different power plants and two different lots of cables, we'll be able to uh, stop all of that happening. All the explosions. Great. Now let's build another substation on the opposite side of the city. This is a good strategy to handle the city growth since it will balance the load. So substation... High voltage power lines. Low voltage power lines. Uh, fix this one. Lovely. Right. Tutorialsburg seems to be uh, doing a lot better now. Lovely. Nice. So far so good. But it seems I got us out of all the trouble you caused, Bob. What are you talking about? Your wind turbines wouldn't have been enough to power the city anyway. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I guess the lesson here is it's a good idea to diversify your power infrastructure. Exactly, don't put all your tomatoes in one omelette, or however the saying goes. Yes, exactly that. It's also important to remember that buildings will by default attempt to obtain power from the closest substation. That's good to know. And substation removes will in turn attempt to obtain power from the closest power plant. Having a few substations providing power to a city from different directions is a good trick to remember when dealing with big cities. Anyway, I hope you'll use everything you've learned today and bring power to the people. That'd be a great name for a video game. I would play that. <laughs> okay, congratulations on completing the last tutorial. They didn't take too long, actually. They took about 25 minutes to get through, so I definitely think we've got time to start on a proper, proper game now. Okay, so congratulations on completing the last tutorial. Now you're ready to start a new game and provide power to the people. Okay, let's let's go. Let's do this thing. Oh, uh, we've got a sandbox mode, but I think if there's a main campaign, why not play the campaign? That sounds really cool. Okay, so welcome. I'm Dr. George Megavolt. I don't actually have a PhD. Doctor's just my first name. <laughs> I see, Dr. George. 
Anyway, I've heard you're an aspiring power grid administrator. Here you'll find all your current business opportunities. As you succeed in running power grids in different parts of the world, you'll earn influence points that will automatically give you access to run bigger and more complex power grids as well as improved technology. Looking forward to it. You can see how many influence points you have on the top right hand corner of your screen. Not a lot at the moment. And you can click on the different cities in the world map to learn more and start your career. Best of luck. Hmm. So I need a certain amount of like influence points to make to, to, to play on certain maps. So oh yeah, okay, so we're unlocking them as we go. The few that we can choose. Um that would give me plus six. We can plus five, plus five. Yeah, okay, let's try Jacobstad. So there's low temperatures, don't cause increased power consumption. Oh, nice. There's a massive forest, lower costs for biomass plants, thanks to the 20 million hectares of forest in the country. That's quite nice. I should remember that. Biomass plants will be good. Sisu philosophy, residential customers only get unhappy after two hours without power during the day. Thanks to the population's resilience and hardiness. Advanced substations is available here, even if you don't have enough influence to unlock it. Lovely. Game mode, high energy or strategic. Hmm. And difficulty, easy, medium or hard. Okay, well, let's try easy strategic, I guess, and see, see how we go. If I find uh, easy, very, very easy, then we'll do something harder. But maybe I'll be able to get through this map in this episode and then move on to some other ones next time. That would be amazing. So, okay, let's play. You've been hired as manager for the local electric company in the Jacobstad area. In order to prove yourself, you need to keep customer satisfaction over 50% for 50 days. Remember, the instant the customer satisfaction drops under the limit, it is game over. Okay. So, it's very cold. New city being built in seven days. Game is paused until you place your first building. The Sisu philosophy effect is currently active. Welcome to beautiful Finland, power architect. This is a remote area where towns are growing slowly, so it shouldn't be too much of a challenge for you. However, be careful about ice formation on your power lines during the winter. Okay. Good to know. So what have we got? It doesn't look like we've got any kind of... Um, any kind of power infrastructure here at all yet. So what are we allowed to build? Power station wise. We can have coal. We can have wind. Um, and that will output 22. Okay. Gas. Photovoltaic. Got 200,000 to play with. Not great on cloudy days. Do we get a lot of cloudy days? I'm not sure. See, this is... I should have probably looked at that more at the beginning of the... So the rain, that's what rain is about. If it's got a lot of rain, it's going to have a lot of clouds and that's going to affect photovoltaic, isn't it? Very much so. And they said the biomass is really good here. So maybe we'll spend a little bit of money on a nice big biomass plant. 15 tiles of NIMBY radius. Close to a water source. Okay. Yeah, let's pop it over here. Lovely. Then we're going to need a substation. Um... Let's do like one of these ones, I think. Can I put it on this island here? Maybe. Let's try that then. So high, oh, high voltage, uh, low voltage. Let's see about that. So we've got a demand of how much? Uh, of 14. 
We've got a capacity of 80. So that's wonderful. So new city being built in seven days. This one is really over over its capacity. That biomass plant could probably do another city, to be honest. Looks like I could do with some more power lines, though, because there's a few places that are saying they don't have any power yet. So pop some down there. And maybe up there. And maybe up there. And then maybe down there as well. I think we need some there too. There we are. Looks like everything's got the lights on now. Lovely. Looks to be all coping very well and very happily. So minus one. I've got to watch the ice on the lines apparently. I don't know what I'd do if there was ice on the lines though. I've got my... Can I, can I do like, um, you know... Like... I don't know, tea cozies for power lines or something. <laughs> Transformers. Ad campaigns for PR. We haven't got any research points yet, though. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what I can do with that, other than give it a lot more capacity than it needs. And we still made a profit despite that, which is amazing. The efficiency isn't great. Reflects how efficient your distribution network, power lines, and substations is. The shorter the path between your substations and your consumers, the better. If you reach a 90% efficiency, you'll get a 5-star rating. Ah, okay. We don't have any energy storage yet either. So it looks like it's not too happy that the substation is so far away from the people. So maybe I could move it. I don't know. Good to know. Let's try and put a, a substation in a, a bit of a different place then, shall we? What if we put one... I don't want the NIMBY syndrome too much, though, either. Put it about there. And then reboot my power lines. I'm still learning, you see, which is probably why they've given me quite an easy one to do there. Um... So what I want to do then is put the high voltage lines going into that. I don't know if that can be demolished. I don't see a bull. Oh, there's a bulldozer. So I could do that or I could just keep the capacity there. I don't know. They're not using any capacity on that one. They're using that one. So we get a refund for that. And let's bulldoze these power lines as well. So I think that's going to be a little bit of a, a better uh, way around. Uh, hopefully that should increase my uh, efficiency without too much of a NIMBY syndrome going on. Yeah, we could try and fast forward to the end of the day, I think. Seems pretty under control, honestly. At the moment, anyway. So will it... Expand or anything like that? Or is it going to pretty much stay as it is? Totally fast forwarding. 17... Oh, look, we've got some expansion. Lovely. Uh, we've managed to get our efficiency up to four. I just don't know. That's going to be a balance. Efficiency versus NIMBY rating is always going to be a big balance. But at the moment, the NIMBY rating is not, not too bad. So I'm going to spend my life, like, uh, moving around power plants and things. We had an expense. Two buildings. Um, does... I'm not sure if it actually takes the sort of capital expenses into account. I don't think it does. But yeah, we made that amount of profit. So I still think that we possibly could get away with being more efficient, with moving that closer. And it's going to start to be nimby-ish. 
Okay, we could build an energy storage. Definitely. Why don't we have a nice... Over on this island, we'll have a nice lithium iron storage. really charging is it so what's going on with that then maybe it has to go through it um to no don't like it bulldoze that line there and see if that makes it store more kind of interested in how this works and again it's not really charging up we're only using 10 megawatts we're producing 80 so that really should be charging up don't know what's wrong actually let's just uh, fast forward and see if anything does charge up oh it has started to okay I think I might have had to like I don't know build it a bit more or something so I think that's showing sort of output versus capacity those those uh, bars there so you can pretty much see it quite quite uh, quickly without hovering over which is quite nice yeah I could have used a smaller one of those but honestly, I like to have the capacity to expand and I don't have to look at it again. Although, if it's giving me a tighter budget, then that might be a problem. So let's fast forward to the end of the day and see what happens. Got a nice full battery there. Which is lovely. Okay, so uh, my average score is actually up to five stars. The efficiency is still a little low. But everything else is five stars. So we're doing, we're doing a great job. We've got 100% satisfaction. Though I honestly think, because I've built it nice and nice and well, we can just keep fast forwarding through for a little bit. We are in April. It looks like everything is fine. End of day four is reached. Everything is fine. I'm quite happy with what we're we're scoring at the moment. A nice big full battery, 30 megawatts. So we're using at the moment um, 8 megawatts, I'm assuming. Okay. So you shouldn't it be storing a certain amount of megawatt hours rather than. Me I don't know. But anyway, never mind. So I'm trying to work out if it's enough to cover it for like a few hours. That's probably enough to cover for about two or three hours. So I'm kind of thinking that what we might want is another storage. Maybe even a low storage. I don't know. Let's have a look. Uh, molten salt facility. High capacity and medium discharge rate. Good complement for renewable energy sources. Flywheel. Cheap with a low capacity. Can be discharged very quickly when needed. Okay. Uh, 40, 30. Yeah, let's do a molten salt. Pop it there. I'll see if I can get it to work. This is more honestly about seeing what does and doesn't work than anything else. So let's see if that starts to charge, which it is. Lovely. We've got two big batteries of about 70 megawatts now, which is hopefully going to be enough to keep this going for a good few hours. <laughs> I 
What we could do as well is put a substation over here um, to go into the town as well. Or another one that's quite close by on the other side. Because at the moment everything's going from the one side, which is probably why the efficiency to over this side isn't too great. So maybe an extra substation, maybe even just a little one. A little mini one. See the mini ones, you can put them quite close. I'm thinking like a mini one like here. Right, and then we get some high voltage cables over. From the old uh, molten salt. It's about there. No? Not enough money? Probably not enough money. Not enough money! To run my cables. So let's um let's go for another day. Get some more profit in and then I can try and build these cables I need. Ah, really? One more day. Power lines with low loads are vulnerable to ice formation. Oh, I see. So we've got some loads going through, then they're fine. Let's go to the next day. A few neighbours in Jacobstad have put some money together. They bought a small residential plot and they're planning to convert it into an office space. Finally, some peace and quiet. Ah. A substation is it connected to anything? What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking I need some money to connect it. That is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking these high voltage power lines are actually super pricey. And I'm just trying to get the efficiency better and I probably should just not worry about that too much. Maybe we'll just doze it. I lost a bit of money on that one, but I know I've got a new uh, city to build soon, so saving up a little bit of money for that might be useful. Um, I've got plenty of generation capacity on my biomass plant, so it should be able to, to for now, bankroll a second city. I want to see where, where it's going to be, though. It's going to be exciting. Ooh. Ooh, a residential area turned into an office building. Lovely. New city being built in eight hours. Okay. Let's go. I don't really want to fast forward to the end of the day because there's a new city being built, but I don't know where it's going to be. So this time I think we'll have to wait. This is all doing really well. The power lines seem perfectly good perfectly good right now um it might be worth if it does start to get uh, up to that 30 megawatts if this town does grow fast for any reason then i will need to maybe run a second line but at the moment it seems absolutely fine substation is coping super well the uh, biomass plant we've got way more electricity than we need it's all very very good i mean obviously it's on easy so you know, giving myself a very gentle start. So where is it going to be? Where's this new city being built? Two hours time. Come on, come on. I don't want to speed it up and then all of a sudden not be able to slow it down. Right, so. Tor, Tor, Tor San Solo has been founded. Alright, lovely. So Tor San Solo is going to need... Um... A substation. I may have to just build the tiny one. It's going to need uh, to be added into the grid, but it's a little far away. Ooh. Those high voltage power lines do not come cheap. How much is that going to cost? Like, more than I have. Oh no! Could I just jimmy in some low voltage to cover it? Just 
just for now. It's probably not really the answer. But it's going to just give them at least some power. And then we're going to upgrade that as we get more money. So we are getting some losses there. Because it's a long way for that to go from that substation. And it's also loading the substation quite a lot. So what I'd prefer to do. Once I have a bit more money. Which is, um, you know, that's fine is to pull down from the battery here, get a high voltage um, power line going. I might even start it now. All the way down here, just as much as I can. And eventually I'm going to get that to come down here and we'll put a substation right outside Tor San Salo. And hopefully that will make my efficiency better because my efficiency is going to be terrible at the moment. Yeah, it's down to, it's down to three. Just pulled my star rating down a bit, but we are making more profit, which is quite nice. So we can use that profit to make it to, to just pull this power line down. But another new city being built in 13 days. Do that much now. Again, let's see how much we can make. Demand, we're still below 40, so the power plant is doing absolutely fine. It's a uh, not having too much pulled, even at peak. Peak is about 40. And uh, we're about 16 in the night. Now we've also got some, some backup power as well, so that's fine. I'm gonna... Carry on. To the end of the day. Oh, what happened? Low power line failed. So I think what's happened there... Oh, of course it did. Right, of course it did. Yeah, what we need there is some more low power lines. So what I'm going to do... Oh, I've got no funds. Oh, no. What I need to do is just to pull some more. I mean, I, I need this high power line, really. Okay, Um, this is not going to work. We need to get through peak, and then we'll be there. We'll be okay. We fast forward to the end of the day. <laughs> that was not a good day. Customer satisfaction was bad. Okay. So we definitely needed that extra high power line, and I needed not to be messing around with things that were too expensive at the start. But it's fine. We can fix it, and we can get that customer satisfaction right back up. So, let us use our 5,000. I don't have enough for a new substation though, but what we can do is a little temporary fix. I now have enough money to go around for a second line in. Well, I think so anyway. Oh dear, okay. Oh, that's interesting. So I'm going to need to go... I think I need to go around. Um, maybe put a line in like that. Oh dear, this is not good. Um, I don't have enough funds for this. Oh, it's all going so wrong. Oh no. Yeah, you don't realise how much... Mo I think this is a mistake I've made, like, early on. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't have enough of the repairs. That's awful. As the thing is, you don't know how far away the new cities are going to be. If the, if the new city had, had popped up over here, I would have been absolutely fine. But unfortunately, it popped up over here, which meant I needed thousands and thousands of pounds worth of lines in there to get it working. So I think this might be a failure. We'll have to see. Oh, thank you, Mayor. We can take a loan. That is a really good idea. How do we take a loan? Quick, 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 quick. 
I need I need to like pause it or something. Um, I need to get a loan so that we can yeah get this infrastructure in. That sounds like an amazing idea to save my game. So where's the financial menu to do that? NIMBY power demand power lines distribution. All right, here we are. Take loans. Right. So I want a loan. <laughs> Already. Okay. I need five influence points to take a loan. Don't tell me I can take a loan when I can't. You horrible man. All right. Well, we've got to make the money then, haven't we? I'll just, I'll just have to see what happens. Ah, oh, I got defeated. I knew. I knew that would happen. Okay, we're gonna try again. Yeah, I can use Shilab in the leaderboard. That's going to be a terrible score. I didn't even last, like, many days at all. I lasted, like, a month. Well, actually, I did last a month. So, yeah, we're going to take that lesson. Take the lesson about how very expensive power lines are. Um, so we had loads of generation capacity, but really struggled with actually... Um, expanding that out into a different town because the town was unfortunately on the other side so we're gonna we're gonna try again it's a good learning experience but that's gonna be it for today's episode so catastrophic failure but a bit of a learning curve also the tutorials and everything so that was a nice little practice run and uh, next time we'll start on a, a real run where I'm gonna actually do a lot better I'm certain <laughs> I think I need to be a lot more balanced with things and as I learn the game and learn how to do things we will maybe ramp up the difficulty a little bit so I hope you enjoyed if you did then please do leave me a like below if you'd like to see more please subscribe I'll let you know when the videos are out I hope to see you next time in the meantime please look after yourselves and keep being awesome